It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. For this video, I'll be reacting to a series of documents from Activision about this whole entire lawsuit that they're facing. And so, without further hesitation, let us begin. Introduction, headquartered in California since the 1970s, were the nation's strongest anti-harassment, equal pay, and other equal employment opportunities protection exists for employees, defendants should be a safe haven workplace in the video game industry. Sexism has plagued the male-dominated gaming industry for decades, and increasing so in recent years. Women and girls now make up half of gamers in America, but the gaming industry continues to cater to men even in California. Activision Blizzard's double-digit percentage growth, 10-figure annual revenues, and recent diversity marketing campaigns have unfortunately changed little. Defendant's compliance with California's broad workplace protection is long overdue. To enforce such compliance, the DFEH brings this government enforcement action seeking to remedy, prevent, and deter defendant's violations of the state's civil rights and equal pay laws to indicate the rights of defendant's female employees and the public interests of the state of California. There's like a lot of stuff that I immediately noticed when I read that first paragraph. Now the first thing is that sexism has basically plagued the entire gaming space because gaming is mostly male dominant. So let's look at that citation on why they say that out loud. The citations from these claims read as follow. Ringman, feminist critics of video games facing stress in Gamergate campaign. What is Gamergate and why are women being harassed? Dozens of women in gaming speak out about sexism and harassment. The Me Too movement fighting against sexual harassment and electronic sports. Is it true that sexual harassment do in fact happen in the gaming space? Sure. However, not every single person who's a gamer are like sexual harassers. That's like the biggest distinction I want to make. But also, when they mention Gamergate, I don't necessarily think that the whole controversy is worth mentioning because number one, this old entire controversy has been like seven years ago. And number two, the main participants for the anti-Gamergate side of things were people like, you know, Anita Sarkeesian, Zoe Quinn, and Brianna Wu. Now, Anita Sarkeesian, considers the act of criticizing her videos as harassment. And of course, people like Brianna Wu have openly, you know, been shown of faking their own personal harassments. So I don't necessarily think that referring to such people as a citation is a very good idea. And we're gonna get back to Gamergate in a little bit in this video because it's actually related to something else that I noticed throughout this whole entire controversy. The other claim is that women make up half of gamers in America. However, when they always make these sort of studies about, you know, women gamers, I always immediately notice that they count mobile players as gamers. When I think about gamers, to me at least, I think about people who play on the PC, who play on consoles, and play a variety of different genres and have a collection of games, right? I don't necessarily consider the casual player of mobile games to be like, you know, a true gamer. Activism Blizzard Incorporated is headquartered in Santa Monica, California. It is one of the largest American video game developers and distributors with approximately 9,500 employees and over a 100 million players worldwide. It is considered a leading gaming platform in the Western world. It is a member of the Fortune 500 and S&P 500. Activision Blizzard conducts business through its subsidiaries Blizzard Entertainment Incorporated, King's Digital Entertainment, and Activision Publishing Incorporated among others. Activision Blizzard also operates global esports organization Overwatch League and the Call of Duty League. The video game franchise Call of Duty is an Activision publishing key product. Blizzard Entertainment maintains the online gaming service Battle 
Net and includes key franchises such as World of Warcraft, Diablo, and Overwatch. Unlike its customer base of increasingly diverse players, the fitness workplace is about 20% women. Its top leadership is also exclusively male and white. The CEO and president roles are now and always been held by white men. Very few have ever reached top roles of the companies for women. The women who do reach high roles earn less salary and set of pay and total compensation than their male peers as evidence and defendant's own records. So far this document has this type of social justice kind of feel to it that most of the positions are like, you know, male dominated, they're white and they're male. And then earlier in the video, we just talked about how they refer to gamer gates and stuff and how apparently they use a flawed study to show that women are like most gamers nowadays. But like, anyway, this is the juicy part where they get into the accusations of stuff. So uh, let's read it. Like the executive ranks, women across the country are assigned to lower paid and lower opportunity levels. Female employees receive lower starting pay and also earn less than male employees for substantially similar work. The fans promote women more slowly and terminate them more quickly than their male counterparts. Faced with such adverse terms and conditions of employment, many women have forced to leave the countries. Defendants also foster a perceived flat boy workplace culture that continues to strive. In the office, women are subject to queue crawls in which male employees drink compass amount of alcohol as they crawl their way through various cubicles in the office and often engage in inappropriate behavior towards female employees. Male employees probably come into work hungover, play video games for long periods of time during work while deciding their responsibility to female employees, engage in banter about their sexual encounters, talk about female bodies, and joke about rape. Unsurprisingly, the Finnish flatboy culture is breeding ground for harassment and discrimination against women. Female employees are subject to constant sexual harassment, including to having to constantly feed off unwanted sexual comments and advantage by their male co-workers and supervisors, and that grow up at the cube crawls and other company events. High-ranking executives and creators engage in blatant sexual harassment without repercussions. In a particular tragic example, a female employee committed suicide during a business trip with a male supervisor who had bought butt plugs and Luperton with him on the trip. The feminists continually condoned the squad pro Q and hostile work environment. The message is not lost on their employees. If you guys just thought what I just read right now was just like really, really terrible, be prepared for this article right here, which pretty much goes into even worse detail. Inside Blizzard Developers, infamous Bill Cosby Suite. As you guys can see right here, there are literal public images on social media of these employees actually having a Bill Cosby Suite. The quotation right here says, Day zero preparations made at the Bill Cosby Suite in effect. And of course, there's like a lot of stuff like uh, Canada Dry, a lot of cups, or like a, a lot of alcohol, and also Coca-Cola. So yeah, they seem to be stocked up on drinks in this sort of, you know, photograph right here. BlizzCon Cosby Crew. <laughs> oh my god, this is awful. So let's read it out loud. I'm gathering for the hot chicks for the cause. Bring them. Greg, you're down for it? You can't marry all of them, Alex. I can. I'm Middle Eastern. You miss Bill Fuck. At Hilton Bar, come at the, uh, I can't see the thing in the bottom, so sorry I can't see that part. Since news broke last week of widespread allegations of sexual harassment and discrimination at Activision Blizzard via a legal complaint from the state of California, many top developers there, both current and former, have responded with shock and dismay. But while many claim that they weren't aware of the problematic frat boy culture leading to the accusations of sexual harassment and assault at the hands of male Blizzard employees, comments, and images here on social media paint a different picture. Based upon the photographs and screenshots of Facebook posts obtained by Otaku, it's clear that the people beyond Alex Farajspi, the man named the lawsuit, and a long-time World Warcraft developer were aware of the Cosby suite mentioned in the lawsuit 
that was apparently a nickname for Farashi's BlizzCon 2013 hotel room and seemingly a reference to the name of the previous convicted rapist Bill Cosby. During a company event, an actual conviction called BlizzCon, a Farashi would hit on female employees, telling him he wanted to marry them, attempted to kiss them, and put his arms around them. This was in plain view of other male employees, including supervisor, who had to intervene and pull him off female employees. When I was just reading all this stuff just right now, there was like a lot of stuff that went through my mind. The first thing, obviously, of course, is that prior to the Gamergate controversy, like many of these employees were, you know, trying to pretend that, of course, they were against harassment against women, supposedly, and a lot of them were actually part of the anti-gamergate crew. But it's just so funny, like, every single time that these sort of people call themselves, like, the anti-gamergators, they always happen to be, like, the harasser and the awful people that they really are. It's, like, happens every single time someone tries to concern about, you know, women harassment. I don't know why. It's the same thing, like, like, like with the females that, you know, want to go after, like, the male feminists and so on. And also, it's so strange to me, too, that, like, if people already knew about this, like, why would, do you know, wait until, like, the last minute to do something? Because right now on social media, there is, like, this one particular journalist who a minute to know everything, and yet he didn't do something all this entire time. Truth is, I heard several stories about sexism and sexual misconduct at Blizzard over the past few years. Needless to say, we'll be reporting more on this. If you worked or at worked at Blizzard and would like to share your story, I'm at blinkity 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 blink. I really don't understand this type of people. Like, how could it possibly be that, of course, people like him, who are like journalists supposed to report the news, the breaking stories, how could they possibly know about all this sort of harassment against women? And yet, they don't do a damn thing about it. Like, I understand, of course, that, like, you know, sometimes it's shocking to hear, sure, but if I was, like, a journalist, and I constantly heard stories or about, you know, whatever, about harassment at a company, I would want to report it. And, you know, as part of the newspaper or the article or whatever, or go to the authorities. Like, if you knew this much time, why did you not do anything about it? Thousands of gamer gay credence are spreading a rumor that I was hiding or sitting on the story about Blizzard. Normally, I wouldn't address their nonsense, but I'm being flooded with messages, so here's the truth. I've been actively investigating this for years, three months ago. I heard rumors and anecdotes, but could never corroborate enough for an article for various reasons. That happens often. Sometimes it takes something monumental for the truth to come out, and I'm blown away by the courage of those who share their stories. Oh yes, all these people who are commenting to your tweets, they're totally, you know, you know, not, you know, normal people. They must be just gamergators. And so the only people that really criticize you guys nowadays are just these awful hidden gamergators in every single corner. The entire gaming community needs to majorly improve on the way we tweet and interact with women in video games. <laughs> Sorry, but like, uh, no, gamers in general, we don't need to, you know, fix our own personal issues with online harassments. No, 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 no. You guys are the ones that need to fix your shit. It's amazing to me, like, over the span of a few days, Activision actually turned out to be the most hated company in gaming right now. And yes, all the gamers right now are against you guys. So don't go lecture to us about how to, you know, treat women when you guys are the ones mistreating the women, not us. So, sorry but not sorry, but you guys should self-evaluate yourself and not us gamers. Yeah! Blizzard employees skip meals to make ends meet while its executives make millions. In order to make ends meet with these low wages, Bloomberg reporter discovered that employees would only drink coffee or eat, oh, okay, in order to make ends meet with low wages, Bloomberg 
In order to make ends meet with these low wages, Bloomberg reporter have discovered that employees will only drink coffee or eat oatmeal for lunch, not being able to afford the company's cafeteria food. Another disclosed that they and their partner give up on having a kid because Activision Blizzard, a multi-billion dollar company, didn't pay them enough for them to be financially feasible. Meanwhile, Activision CEO has made $40 million last year, while the incoming chief financial officer had made $50 million in stock rewards and bonuses and not counting his annual salary. Between the allegation of harassment and bullying and low wages and discrimination, as well as the fact that Activision don't really pay its employees, I've never seen a video game company just sink as low as they are. Like I said earlier in the video, they're probably more hated more at this point in comparison to EA. But what do you guys think about this controversy? Tell me in the comment section down below, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I won't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.